If there is one person you don't want to be an enemy of, that is God. The devil became the enemy of God and was cast out of heaven and was seen in Luke 10.18, falling like lightning from heaven. Judas became an enemy of God, and he could not bear life as an enemy of God, and we all know how that ended up for him. Pharaoh was an enemy of God, and we see the plagues and supernatural disasters that came forth in his kingdom until his army was finally turned into fish. Sodom and Gomorrah are two cities that became the enemies of God, and we see in Genesis 19.24, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. The Bible tells us, Luke 12, 4 through 5, And I say unto you, my friends, Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you with whom ye shall fear. Fear him which, after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. There are grave consequences for being an enemy of God. And if an angel like Lucifer, an angel who was so beautiful and had been given so much power can become an enemy of God, anyone can. So how can someone become an enemy of God? You may immediately say through pride and even quote the verse James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You would be correct in saying this, but that's not what we are going to be looking at today. Most people know James 4, 6, but a lot of people don't know James 4, 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. In the previous verses, James has been blunt. His readers have been living according to worldly wisdom and rejecting the wisdom of God. In James 4.4, 4, he now calls them adulteresses. He equates their choice to continue following the wisdom of the world with the sin of a wife who sleeps with another man. Spiritually speaking, these Christians are cheating on God with the world. Christians are the bride of Christ, and when we make the world our friend, we are giving ourselves over to the world and its corrupted values and desires. This causes great corruption in the heart and mind of the believer because the believer takes on the character of the world rather than the character of God. The world is living for self. Christians are living for Christ. James is warning us that these lifestyles are polar opposite from each other, and it is impossible to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. God declares this person an enemy. In this verse, James said something which should be obvious to us about enmity with God, but it's not. We can't be friends with both the world and with God. It's important to understand what James is not saying here. He is not saying that Christians should never be friends with non-Christians, nor is he saying that Christians should never engage their culture or with the people they meet. That's not what this passage is about. James is clear. Christians who choose to continue to live according to the wisdom of the world, driven by envy and ambition, seeking what they want above all else, are not living as friends of God. They are living in adultery as God's enemies. Denial of friendship with non-believers is not what this scripture is about. Oftentimes, believers misinterpret this scripture by secluding themselves from their family members and the unbelievers, thinking they are fulfilling the law of the Lord. But in the real sense, friendship with the world means being fascinated by the pleasures of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, giving priority to the desires of the flesh, following the instructions of the world and not trusting in God. Listen to the words of Jesus. John 15, 18 through 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. You know what this tells me? This tells me that the world will hate you. And if the world doesn't, that means you are not like Jesus. The Bible makes it clear that you cannot sit on the fence. You cannot be a friend of God and be the friend of the world at the same time. You cannot have one foot in heaven and another foot in hell. There is no such thing as spiritual neutrality. God and this world do not mix. You need to make a choice. It's either you will offend the world and be at peace with God, or you will offend God and be at peace with the world. During my years, I have come to discover that one of the perimeters you can measure how blessed you are is through how many haters you have. There is something about God blessing you that agitates haters. The moment God begins to bless you, your enemies will multiply. I have even discovered that you do not necessarily have to offend someone before they become your enemies. The mere fact that you are being blessed is an offense to them. That's just life. It's not fair, but life is not fair. People won't always be happy when God blesses you. Not only will humans hate on you, 
But the devil also. Nothing infuriates the devil more when the hand of God is on your life. Now, folks, I don't know if you understand today, but Satan's after your life. He's after your blessings. He's after your loved ones. He's after your children. He's after your wife. He is after your husband. He is after your family. He is after your fortune. He is after your home. He is after your mind. He is after your peace. He is after your salvation. That precious gift of salvation is a blessing from the Lord. It is a gift from the Lord. And if he can take it, he would. The devil is about destroying your life. He hates you when you decide to follow Jesus because he knows you will be blessed. He hates you. He despises you. That when you gave your life to the Lord Jesus and accepted him in your life, he can no longer bully and push you around. He's angry that you have the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is angry that you have a one-way ticket to heaven. He is angry that God loves you. He is angry every time he blesses you. But not only is the devil the only one who is angry when God blesses you, people will be angry. People will hate you for the blessing of the Lord on your life. You don't need to be rude to them. You don't even need to even know their names. But people will simply hate you because God has blessed you. You know what this tells me? This tells me that the world will hate you. And if the world doesn't, that means you are not like Jesus. The Bible makes it clear that you cannot sit on the fence. You cannot be a friend of God and be the friend of the world at the same time. You cannot have one foot in heaven and another foot in hell. There is no such thing as spiritual neutrality. God and this world do not mix. You need to make a choice. It's either you will offend the world and be at peace with God, or you will offend God and be at peace with the world. Make up your mind. You have to decide. Don't sit on the fence. On the day of judgment, you will stand there on your own. When the books are open, what will be next to your name? The enemy of God or the friend of God? Each and every day we get to decide. On judgment day, will God look at you as his enemy or his friend? There is a time coming when people won't have this wonderful privilege of being the friends of God. There is a time coming where God won't be as accessible as he is. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This is one of the greatest warnings in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah told us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. We can conclude that this statement from Isaiah the prophet suggests that there will be a point in time where God will not be found. Every second is drawing us close to that moment. Imagine stepping out into eternity as the enemy of God, but a friend to the world. So I encourage today to become a friend of God, and we do this by seeking the Lord. Seeking the Lord is diligently pursuing Him, diligently making time to be in His presence, diligently pursuing the things of God, to know His Word. And most importantly, seeking the Lord means repenting of your wicked ways. This is quite simple and means to let go of anything that God hates by ceasing to have anything to do with it. This is not a suggestion, but rather something that one must definitely do if one is to return to the Lord. Is there a secret sin that you are holding on to? A secret sin that is accepted by the world? A secret sin that God hates? A secret sin that no one knows about you? One that you have been living with for years and you've grown accustomed to it? Let me ask you a question. Is that sin worth it? Is it worth missing out on the Lord for it? Is it worth missing out on heaven for it? My friend, seek the Lord while he can be found. Time is moving. History is moving. The pages of history are being written. And we are fast approaching this wonderful warning of the prophet Isaiah. Notice how I referred to it as a wonderful one. It is wonderful because it also suggests that God can currently be found. The windows of heaven have opened, my friend. You can find God. Back in the Old Testament days, once a year, the high priest alone could go into the Holy of Holies. But in the New Testament days, every believer is a priest, and we may not only go into the Holy of Holies, we may live in the Holy of Holies, and we can find God. The good news is that you will not do this alone, as the Holy Spirit of God will help you. That is because the Holy Spirit will guide you to the Lord. John 16, 13 through 4. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Yielding to the Holy Spirit will make you produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and that will make you a bright light in a dark world. Become a friend of God.